Welcome, my name is Michelle and I'm here in my empty nest. My life has been a series of unfortunate events. I have been married twice, I have been divorced twice, I have built two houses, and I lost the houses basically in the carnage of my divorces. So I've been a single mom for 13 years and basically living paycheck to paycheck. My kids are getting older and they're getting ready to go off to college and do their thing. So I'm looking forward to retirement, but I don't have any retirement money. I don't have a retirement plan. So I had to really start looking at and thinking about my life in the future from an entirely different perspective. I got involved in the tiny house movement originally just to build a tiny house that no one could take away. I figured doing it the same way I did it the first two times, that wasn't working out really well, so I wanted to do something entirely different. So I built my first house, this house, basically using cash and sponsorships to make sure that I have a paid for, nice, comfortable house when I retire. Now I'm building a few more tiny houses that I look forward to renting, like on Airbnb or Try It Tiny or other VRBO kind of platforms and create some income. So that's next. My house is eight and a half feet wide by 24 feet long. And I built it with some help from a few contractors and friends, but mostly myself and the driveway of my rental. By far my favorite room in the tiny house is my kitchen. I think that people sacrifice their kitchen when they go tiny and I wanted to show everybody that you can have a really cool and stylish kitchen. All of my appliances are circa 19, mid 40s, early 1950s. It took me two years to, to collect and refurbish the collection. It truly was a labor of love. My design theme is modern nostalgia and I think I really accomplished it. It's one of my favorite rooms in the house. I do a ton of cooking, I do a ton of entertaining. Also, my tile wall, if you follow my blog, you'll remember that it actually sent me to therapy. And there's a little tile up there right on the wall, and he's a little askew, and his name is Little Bastard. One of the things I would do differently, it would be these stairs. Although I love these stairs, and they were really designed from the perspective that I wanted them to be minimally invasive to the space, but at the same time be really architecturally striking. Underneath of the stairs is the cat box, which is a really nice place to hide it as well. But one of the biggest critiques I get from most people is how narrow they are. So out of all the mistakes I actually made, I think that my stairs would probably count because if I had to do it over again, I might make them a little more wide because I completely underestimated the width of my ass. But I love them anyways. One of the things that I did really differently from most people is I actually adjusted the ceiling height of the loft according to where I'd be spending the most time. So you probably won't notice it on camera, but my kitchen has a pretty high ceiling because the guest loft is over the kitchen. And so I don't spend a lot of time in the guest loft, so I wanted the actual space to be in the kitchen. Conversely, I spend way more time in my bedroom than I actually do in the bathroom. This loft actually has about four more inches of headroom than the guest loft does. My quilt is really, really a special memory for me. My grandmother died just prior to planning the tiny house build and I inherited actually her entire, the contents of her entire sewing room. This quilt is actually made from all the fabrics that my grandmother had given me when she died. When you live in a tiny space, utilization of vertical space is actually way more important than utilization of horizontal space. People that fill horizontal space actually creates clutter, but when you create intentional storage in a vertical space, you create architectural interest. One of the things that I don't like about most tiny houses is they don't have like real furniture. People take 
boxes and they put cushions on top of them and they call them couches. And so one of the things I wanted to create when I created the living room was a real, what I call proper living room, living room chairs and an ottoman and a bedside table and an entertainment center. I'm really super proud of the space that I've actually created here. It's very comfortable and it's also very functional. What you can't see here, however, is a couple of things. First of all, these chairs were actually designed to add additional storage space. And on top of that, if you actually pull these chairs apart, there's a table that's tucked beside the refrigerator that goes right here that actually provides dining and table spaces. So first and foremost, having a glass door on a bathroom is really unique, but I love the feng shui. I love the light. I love the space and I love the architecture. This is an antique door, but right behind this door, there's actually a curtain. So if you do have to go to the bathroom and there's someone else in the house, which there's only people here when I have parties, which is regularly, but you know, not every day. I actually do have a stackable washer and dryer. I can't do all my laundry here. I can't do my jeans and my towels and my blanket. I have my kids do that. <laughs> we have sort of like this reverse roll thing going on. I call my daughter my laundry fairy. I drop off my dirty laundry and then it appears on my front porch all folded. But for day to day laundry, I love the fact that I don't have to run to the laundromat every five minutes. I can literally go weeks upon weeks without having to go to the laundromat which is really great another myth in the tiny house movement is that you have to sacrifice and downsize like a ton but the truth is you can do some really cool stuff when it comes to built-in cabinets and sort of unutilized space this is three pairs of my 47 pairs in the house this is three pairs of dress shoes they fit perfectly in the two by four framed wall i'm very much a girl i have like 200 pairs of earrings and necklaces i have tons of clothes tons of shoes so there's only certain things that I was willing to sacrifice and being a girl was definitely not one of them. Ah, he's back! Look! Oh. Is that a frog? His name is Ralph. <laughs> and I suspect that he's actually crawling up the drain pipe behind the washer and dryer. Like that's the only space in the house that's probably big enough. So he's swimming through the pee trap. He's crawling up the drain pipe and he's coming in the house and he loves nothing better than to hang out in my shower. I take him out in the woods and I set him free and then it takes about two to three days and then he comes back and hangs out in my shower. This is an amazing sink from La Cava. Um, this is actually a hand carved, all one piece Italian marble sink. Like a lot of tiny housers, in order to stay off grid and in order to live a more sustainable life, we embrace composting toilets. And my favorite by far is nature's head. Basically, there's three types of waste. There is gray water, and I handle all the gray water in my house by sitting on top of 18 inches of gravel. Long story short, sort of a modified gray water treatment system I've got going on. But then the toilet actually separates the liquids waste from the solids. Out back of the tiny house, I have a 25 gallon garbage can. In the bottom of the garbage can, I have little teeny tiny holes that are drilled all the way around. I fill the garbage can up with 24 gallons of water. I pour the one gallon of urine into there. I put the lid on and then it leaks very, very slowly down. It's fully diluted at 25 to 24 to one. It leaks down through the holes, down through the gravel and actually be turned to the ground water itself. That actually concept came from the humanure handbook. The solids, my Land host is not really keen on composting humanure for very, very understandable reasons. It's a really, really kind of high tech kind of scientific process. So I called the local garbage people and I said, how would you like me to dispose of the contents of my composting toilet, my dry flush toilet? And they said, put it in a bag and put it in the garbage. We deal with diapers every day. So that was sort of a compromise on my part because you know, I'd like to utilize it as soil, but my land hosts, they're not really keen on the humanure concept, but my garbage company was more than happy to take care of it. When I started building my tiny house, I had no money. None. I had to finance my tiny house in a way that actually did not consume any of my 
paycheck to paycheck existence. I had to create really, really creative ways to finance my tiny house. The first thing I did was I actually got an old vintage RV from a neighbor for free. I put about $700 into it and I turned around and I sold it for $3,700. I did an ombre dresser that I got for free on Craigslist and I sold it for $325. Just all kinds of separate little things that would help. And then I ventured on the whole sponsorship thing. I first discovered the whole concept of sponsorship. Andrew Odom wrote a book called Your Message Here. My advice, however, for sponsorships is you don't have to get 22 corporate sponsors. You can get a very, very simple sponsorship for a sink or for a toilet or for flooring or for siding. Whatever it is that you really feel either passionate about or you feel comfortable advocating and promoting, I really feel like I found my people. I really feel like I found a group of people that get me, and that's really rare. I have never really had a sense of home. I grew up in foster care. My, my birth parents were divorced when I was four years old. I went into foster care as a toddler. I was adopted as a teen and then left that house when I was 18, and I'm now estranged from my adoptive family. We're all just making it work. We're, not necessarily legal we're not necessarily rich maybe not all of us are really really smart we're all sort of pirates I'm literally living illegally in my tiny house on the down low like below the radar of legality but we're just making it work and supporting each other and and finding a way to make this life of ours the best version that we can make it without sort of conforming to what society tells us we have to do I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you didn't get quite enough of me, you can hear me also every single week on Tiny House Podcast, www.tinyhousepodcast.com. If you like the inside of my house and you want to see more pictures, you can go to www.gotinyorgohome.com. And be sure to check out the podcast because I was just a guest. I know. It's so fun. It's so cool. Peace. Have a great day. Bye.